Hello and welcome to the Ben Tablet Show, the final one for February 2019. Let's get going with um, some games. And who am I going to play first? Torfan Fragment. Very likely German. No. Turfan Fragment. Maybe. Anyway, I'm black and I'm awaiting his move. Let's go for Dutch defense. Oh, knight c3. Yeah, that's a line that I play myself with white. Okay. I don't really, I never really understood this line for white. I, I played this myself, but I didn't take on f6. I never quite understood the appeal from white's um, point of view. You're giving up the bishop pair, and I mean, I, I do understand that um, this is. Um, um, that is, this is kind of weakish, the double pawn, but it's also not easy to attack. I think most of the time, white is playing differently, rather with knight e2, f4, and things like that. Okay, I completed this long journey of the knight. Oh, and now he corrects my pawn structure. This is a really, really nice position for black to have get a huge space advantage. This is one of the absolute upsides of a, an opening like the Dutch defense. Yeah, it, it has a slightly shady reputation, but if it works, it works nicely. Then you get some activity much more than you would get oftentimes in a classical, more classical opening. Yeah, I'm going to pile up on the on the king side. Can just attack with all the pieces. White's position is is very passive. Um, yeah, I wanted to play rook f8, but this is so tempting. <laughs> you you can you, it's possible to sacrifice immediately. I'm simply threatening pawn takes, queen takes, I'm threatening rook f1 and mate on h2 and there is no way to defend that. Absolutely no way. Um, tja. Yeah, many moves win, but let's just get another piece into the game. Yeah, sacrificing is good, but just taking taking pieces is better. Sacrifice the opponent's pieces. Um, where is the mate? Now this is probably one way. I blundered d5. I should not do that. Fortunately, it, it doesn't really matter. He only has one more check on d8. Yeah, no more checks, and there is no way to cover g2. Yeah, 
yeah, animate. Thanks for the game, Turfen Fragment, probably. Um, Slavov is on. And I've never played him before. That's nice. All right. Let's do something else. C3 is kind of a ultimate spoil sport move. Okay. And I need to outplay you on the black side of a Slav exchange. It's what it is. Yeah. Okay, I mean, this is equal, but one thing that is worth mentioning sometimes um, in those very symmetrical positions, knights are actually quite good. There are more, um, they have more, often more, um, more maneuvering ideas. And um, bishop um, sometimes turns out to be somewhat useless, yeah, surprisingly. Let's go here and let's take a pawn. Yep. Grab a pawn. Grab another pawn. So the A pawn. I got the A pawn. Or not much and you notice um, what I mentioned that um, that um, the bishop is kind of useless in this position I wonder about rook b8 I don't mind don't mind to trade the question is one question is but I can do that it's not a problem and then rook c2 huh That was kind of stupid. I mean, he's got h3, and then it's not totally clear what all this was about. I cannot cover the a pawn. Hmm. That's surprising. Now I'm winning a pawn, an important one, the F pawn or the E pawn. Hmm. Yeah, the F pawn is super important. It covers the E pawn and the remaining pawns are all weak. Just preventing G4. Not sure that this was necessary, but it's it's not bad. Okay, now, um, where to put the knight? First here. Um, yeah, 
one knight b2 c4 probably the knight would also be nicely placed on f5 Here, this is actually possible. Before, there was a bit of an issue with bishop f1, maybe. Now that it's not possible. And then this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, king and pawn ending with an extra pawn is almost always winning all right now how do we how do we win this um, he's got h4 but yeah I can just go back to f6 and this is fine. Mm, yeah, what is uh, what is the easiest way to win this? King d6. Let me check. I need to be a little bit on the lookout. Wait, uh, what did I do here? I, after h4, I probably cannot win, huh? What did I do there? That was very stupid. Very strange. No, I had, a, I had a complete brain slip. Yeah, h4 was a draw. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, very uh, weird. thinking hmm. okay thanks for the game slavo f or slavov something along these lines um i'm going to take the challenge by triacon i've played him quite quite frequently before but um i'm close to 2900 and one or two wins against hi somewhat higher rated opponents um, could be enough to put me over that 2900 barrier yeah I, I'm just terrible I'm just terrible in this opening uh, come on What? Why? Why am I always in a in a bad position there? I don't quite understand that. Oftentimes I go knight a5 and then they play bishop a2 and then they get b4 in and my position sucks. I mean this this cannot be the solution really. But I mean uh, uh, hmm.
Instead of, instead of writing all those books, yeah, I should probably learn the Rui with Black. It's this opening I get on the board like every other game. And then, then I have positions like that, that they totally suck. Oh my god. You're threatening knight g6 and knight f5. Oh my goodness. This is totally, totally terrible. Yeah, I saw the the Carlsen Swidler match. Why didn't I go to d7 at least so that e4 is hanging? Oh my god. This is this is fantastically bad. <laughs> oh my god. This is the worst ever. I mean this is terrible for me, but I'm not even sure that this was the best possible way. E5, but E5, knight E4, queen G4 is probably already killing. Yeah, probably yes. Knight E4, queen G4. The problem is that I cannot go queen G6 due to knight E7 check which is just end of game. Okay. Yeah, this is probably winning in many ways for white. Yeah, probably one of them. Even though, yeah, no, no need to calculate. If you, I don't have anything good anyway. So, bishop c eight. Knight d8 was necessary to protect g7. Queen g4 was killing after knight d7. But I think it's just tactically just lost. This is probably good. Now he's threatening all kinds of discoveries. E6 kills me, I guess. Yeah. 
no choice. It's amazing how bad this position is, really. Bishop h7 wins the exchange, but I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> it is, of course, completely lost, but... but uh, I don't know. Mm. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm kind of alive. I mean, not in good shape, but it's not like the game is over immediately. one of the better positions I had in this game which is not uh, a good sign I swindled myself out of this. I just have no time, it's a problem. Yeah, I got no time. The position is even, even really good. Just impossible to do in the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is why I usually like to play with a small increment. They cannot simply stop to play chess and uh, win on time. Okay, thanks for the game Triacon. Yeah, there was no way to get to 2100 then. I mean, the, the position was of course completely lost and he played it, um, played it very well. But you have to put, put me away then also. I mean, that was certainly possible. Okay. Yeah, the Swiddler cards match. I mean, there is really a, a bit of a problem to if you have Magnus playing in Blitz. Um, it's quite difficult to get a competitive match. I mean, I don't really, I don't really know who you want to, uh, who, who should play yeah, to make it really, really competitive. It's probably not possible. I know that looks funky, but Report did a good job in St. Louis and he's uh, always in for those kind of funny ideas. Let's <laughs> do it. Let's do this jeep on stuff. It's, it's not exactly easy to refute, I think. D6. Yeah, maybe. Uh, 
that makes sense. He wants to check me on b5. I, I don't really have a huge... Uh, he does not want to check me. Okay. He wants to go to g5 is the thing. Huh, okay, now nah, and I knew that my whole approach approach was shaky. Eh? He's got just bishop f4 next move. Oh my god. Ah yeah yeah yeah. I shouldn't have done that. I mean I know eh? I cannot play like report. Why do I try even? <laughs> Why do I try? Yeah, I was totally lost last game. I'm completely... I'm not arguing uh, about this, really. Wow, what a bad position. Yeah, the final position was certainly completely winning, that's true. Yeah, just bishop f4 and my position is completely... sucks completely. I don't even know what I'm, my move is then. Honestly. Oh my god. Now that was a very really bad idea to play this kind of this kind of uh, unsound stuff. Right after I lost the game before. That wasn't a good idea. Why doesn't he just play bishop f4 and kill me? End my misery, please. After bishop f4, I don't even have a move. I have no move. Hm, I don't know. What, what is the issue here? I wonder what I'm overlooking. Yeah. I mean, my position sucked so badly that even this is probably good. I guess I have to cover that. Wow. This is truly terrible. Still, <laughs> still completely terrible. But King has to help in the defense. The only good news is if I'm not getting checkmated quickly, I, I will be okay. <laughs> but the likelihood is, is rather high. But I mean, there is quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff already traded. This is uh, kind of helpful. What is that? Okay. What is he doing here? I don't understand it. Is this how Report wins his games? Irritating the opponent to no end. Okay, this looks uh, kind of okay now. I mean, he's not really threatening to take this. How do we win though? Hook h3 maybe or something. I expect him to somehow retreat the queen. Even though that's the only annoying piece at the moment. Somehow it, it attacks a7, so I'm not so easily moving the rook. Yeah, latest books in my collection. Yeah, I, I, I got a couple. 
and I still have to make this game changer video about uh, about Alpha Zero. Didn't didn't yet manage to do that. This is probably the most remarkable book that I recently got. I would really like to win in an attack. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Um, okay, but if I go here, I'm kind of freeing the rook here. Okay. That's, that's true. Okay, now white is threatening nothing. Maybe rook takes g4. Rook takes g4 is kind of is part of this position. Huh. How do we do that? If I trade queens, I'm fine. That is a bit lame, this move. Just want to play rook d8 next. Okay. And I need to play for mate here. Like this. F3. I'm playing for mate here. You have to play for mate. Oops. Maybe he had to take it. the stalemate he's got 0 0.4 seconds i can do whatever i win on time ah jesus ah. oh my goodness okay ah. yeah let's uh Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick move, you know. <laughs> uh, that was costly. Very costly. Um, yeah, no, I will definitely make other videos like the ELO meter. I mean, I, I made a video on my channel where I did a test um, um, of 70 positions and then they calculated a rating estimate i thought it was fun uh, i thought it was fun a student of mine pointed this out to me mm, sorry and um i thought it was quite entertaining to do um i want to do um yeah some variety of videos on my channel tomorrow i've got something 
different on as well. Yeah, this Elometer, it probably, um, the ratings that it, that it calculates are probably a bit too high. It, um, it estimated my rating on 2600, like between 24 and 28 something, which uh, is not entirely wrong, of course. But it was certainly a little bit high. I mean, I checked it uh, after I got the results. I checked what, what other people had, and I had a much higher rating on the Illumeter, for example, than John Bartholomew and Eric Rosen, a lot higher. And that is a bit odd. I don't know Eric all that well, but I know that John is just basically my level. So it, I was surprised that his result was, was so much lower. Yeah, knight b5, I tried to play queen to c7, like for evacuation. I think John scored 2300 something, I don't know. I don't want to say something wrong, but I know it was significantly lower than what I had, which made, relatively, which made no sense to me because we were really about the same. Yeah, it's a very simplistic approach, just trade queens when you are a pawn up, but it's just, uh, I am the pawn up, which is uh, of course helpful, but the A pawn is particularly awful to lose because that makes the whole position completely static. There is no B5 and I can now very slowly build up a rook to D2, E4, F4 and so on. And he's got absolutely no play at all. Yeah, I mean, these kind of tests are always a bit um, problematic. I mean, the, mon the main reason I did it was that mm, I was looking for some, um, I was looking for some uh, other video content. And when my student said that he did this test, I felt, okay, why not? Yeah, it uh, is a couple, and it's a mixed bag, a couple of, different uh, position types. What I didn't like so much um, was that it um, immediately, once you entered the move, it immediately left the board. So you didn't have a chance to, um, after you put it on the board, like at least briefly tell something like, I play this because after this and that reply. I mean, that it's not meant to do that, uh, I understand but um, it would be helpful. Yeah, I don't think tactic trainer results are closely related to real playing level. I think that they are generally very useful. I think doing regularly, um, doing tactics training regularly is uh, absolutely important and should be done, <coughs> sorry, in particular, right before, um, right before a tournament. No, I never tried what you write in the chat. I mean, not going to, discuss the product of a competitor. <laughs> uh, 
uh, for what it's worth, I did what you asked about two times and it um, was, for my personal taste, a bit too hectic. Which is not really criticism, I was just, yeah, yeah I, I do understand that you didn't want to advertise the different sites, just like, it's just what it is. Um, so I, I tried it once, it's okay, it, but I, I don't want to have uh, um, this hectic type of puzzles. All right, I'm still uh, just material up. It's what it is. Not threatening to take it, huh? No tactic. And then you can actually take it too. Um, okay. Uh, made right the rook is covered <laughs> so it's made in one <laughs> all right yeah thanks for the game Gerhard let's play clicky clicky I think I did three runs on that game the first one I got something slightly be like below 40, 38, 39 or something. And then I uh, then I tried to be eh, try to improve. And then I um, had uh, you're out after um, you're out after three puzzles and um, I I uh, was too hectic and um, I was out three times after that, so I had only one real score, I think. But uh, I could be wrong. I mean, it's I did it some some weeks ago. Okay, Clicky played the Vienna opening, or um, you can also call it the Bishop's game. It's very similar. Well, similar is wrong. It, it, it can lead, those two move orders can lead to absolutely the same position. What I'm trying to do is to play knight f5 and knight to d4. Let's go for that. And of course d5 would be nice to play. Yeah, it's it's very solid for white still. I got a question talking about Chess24 content. There is this huge video series now by Laurent Frézenet, probably wrong pronunciation, uh, on, the, the, on the Berlin. Is, um, is this uh, something, is, anybody saw that is what I'm trying to say or watched some of that. I would be interested in learning uh, how, how he's doing it. The Berlin is one of those openings that is hugely relevant on the professional level, but nobody plays on the club level. Okay, now I can also do this. I just want to gain a bit of time and get his bishop. On the other hand, now that I think of it, that is probably, oh, that is uh, an easier choice. Mm 
Yeah. He gave me the queen just like that. All right. Thanks for the game, Clicky. Um, who else is on? I didn't play Epinikion for quite a while. We played often. But let's go here, Materialist. What is he up to? Ah, the Ponciani. Is Fuxia on? I don't think she is. <laughs> yeah, I really think it's a bad opening. White needs to be precise to equalize. But it's the kind of thing you never have on the board, is the thing never. And that means you 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 tend to forget simply you tend to forget the details yeah so just a6 or bishop e6 yeah, I, I want to be ready probably for the potential capture, so bishop e6. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is the opening result that White was after in the Ponziani. Then uh, something is wrong. Black is just better. I think white, the best white can get in the Ponziani is something like reverse Philidor. Like roughly, maybe equal. I think it's equal. But it's, it's, it's conveniently equal for black. The main problem I think is from white's perspective is that black um, that black has um, like various lines that are at least um, comfortable and rather better for black. Just not one. D5 is just the most forcing one. D5 has the best chances to be better uh, for black. All right, now what to do? Yeah, even d4 is an idea. d4, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop f4, and then grab on, grab on uh, b4. Not sure if this is best though. I can do it. Oh, maybe I should have actually... No, I should have played b5. Oh, that was silly. After b5, I'm simply winning. The queen has no move. There is no good move. Ah, that is silly. I, I calculated this, you know, and thought, okay, this is just fine. It is fine. But it is, of course, not the best possible way to play. The other line would have um, probably just won. Okay. Yeah, give me C4. I don't mind. 
at least um, if the night is off, I'm not going to fall into some bloody fog. <laughs> this is a pragmatic, but I think useful approach. C3 is the Ponziani move, and it's also the move after which White resigns. Or not. I guess I would resign, yeah. It looks pretty, pretty pointless. Yeah, so I got the right guess there. Thanks for the game, Materialist. Okay, uh, Pan Pancho, Val Pancho Valves. Pancho Alves Pancho, whatever. Let's win a pawn. No. Bloody London system. <laughs> really? <laughs> The bloody London. Yeah, that makes sense, really. But let me just, I just want a totally unconventional position. All right, so knight c6. Now what? E3. Mm, E5 doesn't work, unfortunately. Hmm. It looks like there could be some trickery. Um, no, um, there is no particular reason. I've played the Benko um, a lot right after my Benko repertoire uh, was released and I also played it in tournament chess sometimes. Um, I'm not playing it that much at the moment, that's true. Um, there is no particular reason. The main reason is, I mean not a, a reason uh, in terms of quality that I think it is bad or anything. It's just that I haven't studied it for a long while, and uh, this is why. And none of no no um none of my students um play the banco. And um, when I oftentimes what I play here in the in the Bento blitzes are sometimes lines that I've prepared for students. I prepared for like for junior championships, things like that. And I want some variety, and uh, oftentimes this is why. I'm playing um, playing uh, different openings, and um, the Benko I haven't studied for quite a while, so I'm really I sometimes play it still here, but um, it's usually a matter of um, of focus. Yeah, sometimes I just don't have it on the radar all that much. And then I don't play it, but there's no particular reason. I also play a little bit less of 1e4 at the moment online. I, I write the d4 repertoire, so I play a little bit more of d4. Yeah, people quite often don't take the both pawns yeah, against the Benko. This is also my experience. I think that um, they often don't want to give black any sort of initiative. This is a funny, funny thing here. Yeah? Knight c3, queen g2. I'm attacking g2 in this position. And this is a problem for white. At least there is no super clear cut answer. The knight on a5 is somewhat stranded, but Currently, g2 is hanging first, so 
Knight c3, queen g2 is fine, I think. Okay, um, yeah, I can simply take f3. Yeah. yeah, this is a move I had on the radar. I was thinking queen c4. And then take g2. I don't have anything else, right? Not really. I will take. Hmm. I thought you would take on uh, on on uh, a five. Interesting. Yeah. Now um, I just uh, I only now realized <laughs> I don't even have I don't have extra material here. I was somehow thinking I'm I'm a pawn up. I don't know why. Yeah, namesake. I play I play the Perunovic variation as it is called. I play it, and this is what I studied in the repertoire. Yeah, hmm, I don't know. Maybe I didn't play it. Play this in the best possible manner. It's got knight c5. Yeah. Blah, blah. It was played a bad move over here. Mm, whatever. Ah, okay, that was not even my question. Okay. Okay, so e5. I try to control c5 here and uh, basically claim that he's got all those double pawns and it doesn't help him so much. Not so happy with this. I misplayed this quite a bit. Yeah. You know, white is in, in good shape here. I'm a pawn down and I don't have any uh, serious compensation. I have a question, a completely non-chess question. Um, last weekend they had had the Academy Awards, the Oscars. Did anybody see any of those movies, and are they any good? Sometimes they're not even released in Germany, so it's kind of a non-question. If we have German, we don't only have; we also have other other countries on. Okay, I was always thinking he wanted to play e6 to make it a little bit more active, but he didn't. Stop this for a bit. So, a Bohemian Rhapsody is worth watching. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really took take an interest all that much. It's kind of 
it, it sounds di di very difficult to play a character as Freddie Mercury well, but I think it seems that he did a good job there, the actor. Okay. I can I, I cannot go there. Yeah. Oh, time. I have to play a lot quicker. He should take it. No, he didn't. Okay. He's playing this a, a bit too slow, a bit too slowly. I will win this on time. Okay, thanks for the game, Pancho Valvis. That was uh, tough, that yeah, was worse. Um, and I didn't quite understand what was going on in this game. <laughs> okay, so Doppelangriff, double attack is the next opponent. I could have played a Petrov for a change. Ugh. <laughs> the bloody Italian. Okay. As Magnus coined it, the beep you factor. <laughs> Queen e7 looks completely terrible, but it has been played by Magnus actually in a blitz game, admittedly, but still. And he probably had the beep you factor in mind when he played it. It looks utterly ridiculous, but it is not completely terrible. One point of all this is that black um, sometimes gets an f5. This is actually very debatable, but he takes it. That's a bit surprising. I wasn't really um, expecting that to happen. Oftentimes white can try to simply let the knight stay on f4 and claim that, yeah, it's a uh, Yeah, the knight on f4 is kind of, as somebody once coined it, uh, an Anna Kunikova piece. Looks great, but never wins. But uh, he just took it. Yeah, I think I'm, I should be fine here. Yeah, I can even go g4 next, queen g4, queen g5, and at least, uh, yeah, look aggressive. <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting, interesting move. And then d5, I guess. Otherwise, no, that, that is fine for me. I'm just like very quick on the d file and e5 is weak. Oh, that's very good for black. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Yeah, white is still very nicely centralized, so I have a hard time to improve the position. 
No, no, I definitely underestimated this, yeah, or overestimated my position. And it's not, it's not that fantastic. Rook d8, he simply takes and f7 is hanging. I never play king g8, he has e6. And e6 is an issue anyway. Okay, I probably have to put pressure on e5 and win the pawn. That is the, the way to go. Queen c7 and then try to take the pawn without running into some kind of sick pin. Yeah, I'm probably knight f3, but oh, now he plays it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Didn't didn't really see that actually. It's not the end of the world, but I should have had it on the radar. Yeah, I would like some ending. The ending would be good, just with the space and the bishops. Well, the way it is, it's not so easy to to handle this. You can easily um, easily screw it up. I wonder if knight to d4 is an issue. Knight e6 is a threat then. Maybe this, yeah. trying to get rid of the queens. I mean, the white queen cannot really run. And um, rook e7, I have the check. Okay, now I can play rook e8, trying to trade it quite forcefully trying to trade it off. Yeah, I have the bishop sitting on e8 then. That's a bit of a pain. He can take bishop e6. That's not so good. Hmm. Phew, tough call. You can play rook d1 as well, it's possible. Okay. Now I can do this and keep everything covered. And I slowly now approach. Okay. And I don't want to take, of course. And he's got 96. He's got 96. C5, knight b5, unfortunately. No. I, I, have, I basically had to. <laughs> not, not happy. If I want to continue the game, I mean, I can just play king g7 and make a draw after knight e6, but if I want to do something, my very, the very slight hope that I have in this position is that, that, um, that pawn is on a4. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's just totally equal. B4 is probably correct. It wasn't quite necessary what he did, but it's not not an issue yet. <clears throat> it's still not an issue. I shouldn't run into some kind of wiki wicked self mate. No, not a draw. Oh, no, I, it, no, I tricked him. Tricked him. Oh, it's giving me many pawns. Okay, so I won on time. We <laughs> all right. Okay, um, so let's see. Yeah, I don't know. There's such a long list, and um, I try to try to mix it. So it's possible that you're on a bit of a bit, and I still don't play you. Um, but we can. I mean, I still have a terrible score, right? No, one one. So let's do it. Yeah, I won, the, I won two weeks ago, yeah, kind of undeservedly. But now I've got white, which is helpful. Hopefully. I don't don't quite believe in this kind of position for black. I should have C4 next. Breaking breaking the whole position open. Yeah, but maybe black black has a good center, so there might be some direct dynamic way to make use of that. Okay, I'm not sure if I should provoke g6, probably not, so I'm just going back. I wonder about c4, if, if d4 is good then. Maybe, maybe. I probably have to prepare this a little bit better. So I, my intention is to play c4 without black being able to play d4, which should be possible now. And should lead to a pawn structure that is favorable for white. e4 is a bit weak and my bishop they bishops they look quite strong he wants to take and play knight to e5 definitely It's not easier. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I'm not sure what the best continuation is here, to be honest. Intending knight f5, and I wouldn't mind the trade really. Yeah, rook d8, rook a d8. I might just take a7. It looks a little bit, a bit, bit odd, but maybe. Rook d2 then, mm, no. Okay, now, so he has um, created a weakness here on a6. This is nice. Just have to be a bit alert here on how to do that. b5 and c4 probably. Trying to stop, stop those pawns and try to attack them next is the idea. Probably doubling on the d-file, even though this looks very obvious, doubling on the d-file, but I'm not quite sure what it actually does. As I cannot go to d7 or maybe to d6 then. Okay. Yeah, I thought here he always has to take care of the a pawn. Rook c8 is not possible. Okay, now queen c5 is a bit better. I can also do this. Yeah, he has c4, but I'm absolutely, I don't believe this is so great actually. I'm still on all kinds of, I'm on the a pawn and it's not, this is not so great for black. Unless he has something really strong, like, yeah, stuff like that, some computer star move. Bishop d7, bishop d7, however, yeah. Yeah, bishop d7. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the game, Blobix. With computer style move, I meant um, it's like sometimes um, computers have this this excellent ability to combine play on both sides of the board. So you kind of defend on one side, or you have play on one side, and all of a sudden something happens on the other side. So I wasn't I wasn't implying cheating or anything. I just meant like some, sometimes it happens that the computer switches sides and. I all of a sudden saw that there is, could be something on the king's side and then he played knight g4. Okay, so JKF Stevens, or uh, let's go with the big bad wolf. That's a good one for the final game. The big bad wolf with an old Grishok picture. picture. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, it's uh, in the style of um, Reti, right? Reti Alakine. 
Baden Baden. That is is what's the game, right? Was that Rati? It was Rati, right? I know it looks funny, but this this setup that I play against the English is quite playable against this reversed Pirts as well. I know this is a little bit loose, but it's the final game of the session, so might as well fire. Okay. I want to go to g4 without being arrested by bishop g5. Yeah, that's a bit of an annoyance at night. Is there some way to play for a direct attack? Probably not, honestly. Probably not. <laughs> oh, how long am I still playing? This is a final game. The session is uh, almost over. I'm already on for close to three hours. <sighs> Sorry, been a long day. Uh, G5 is the kind of move that you know is bad, but you still want to play it. No, it's just too bad. <laughs> I mean, G5 is just completely, it's a completely maniac move. It, it, it becomes interesting the moment White somehow decides to move the F3 knight which he probably will not do. Yeah. It's a super odd game. <laughs> but okay, I'm going to stop that and try to undermine the center, maybe knight e7 next. It's just very strange. Yeah, that's probably good. Bishop b2. White is taking an awful lot of time. Maybe that's why he has Grishok as his profile picture. He's a big fan of spending, <laughs> spending hours. Uh, I don't know hours is, is a bit much, but spending a long time in blitz. Okay, now um, I wanted to do this. He's got bishop a3 though. The whole thing here. Yeah, that doesn't really do much good. Should have gone to b6 um, anyway. Okay, so queen side is somewhat closed, and now I got this idea to maybe play the knight and then play g5. Yeah, the situation is not entirely clear. It is um, very likely not uh, particularly great for me, but it's not easy to play. No, no, no. That cannot be the right decision. I don't believe that. Giving me this, this diagonal, that, that should not be right. 
However, how do we play this? G5, is this, is this a brutal move? Ah, come on. It's a final game of the session, so let's do it. In for Penny. It's going to be very dangerous, absolutely. For white. And he's got one minute on the clock. That um, is not helping. A wow. I thought he had to. I thought he basically had to play a uh, knight takes. Okay. Now, I thought knight f2 is over. Knight e3 is not winning, but that should win. Queen h3 mate is a big problem. Yeah, taking on g3 was interesting as well, but I saw that and I don't think, I just couldn't see that he's defending this. Yeah, but this is indeed not entirely clear. Um, Yeah. Knight e6, I take and then knight e3 and I win the queen as well. That's total, <laughs> totally, <laughs> total madness. Okay, now. Yeah, knight e6 is kind of a problem. <laughs> I have absolutely no clue here what's going on. Knight g6, knight e6, king e7, bishop g5. That I cannot do. Yeah, maybe, maybe this. <laughs> Just back, back to F2. Okay. Yeah, okay, again, if I move it, can take with the queen, huh? If I take with the queen, pawn takes knight c2. He's got bishop g5 though. And yeah, this is probably better. Queen h3 is still on. It just, is, it just doesn't meet him, yeah. There is just no mate. Okay, yeah, time, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was a bit of a wild ride, this one. But uh, okay, it was definitely uh, fun to watch. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show or the shows if you even watched both of them it's uh, three hours thanks a lot for watching the english show and thanks for taking part in the chat 
I'll be back next week for the first show of March. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.